Hi, I'm uh, Major Kent Borschelt with Highlander Composite Squadron. I'm um, doing a video for our cadets today and anyone else that's interested on how to do a walk around and some basic uh, aircraft information as we go and checklist usage. So I've got the keys today to our Cessna 172 out at Centennial. Um, I haven't pre-flighted this airplane before and that's what, one of the reasons I picked this airplane is to show you how the checklist is so important to use. The key is when you're doing a pre-flight, to be very meticulous about following every item on the checklist. So whether you're in the Air Force or airlines or anytime you fly an airplane, um, the smallest thing on the checklist that you could potentially miss could potentially be catastrophic. So we'll start pre-flighting the airplane and we'll kind of show you how this works. So we're at the airplane today, I've got the keys. Uh, we walk up and just kind of check the general condition of the airplane. We're basically looking for flat tires or anything major that's obvious leaks. Uh, we turn the key and then these doors just pop right open. When you're uh, working around airplanes, the first thing you want to do with the key is always set it on the dash. And that tells anybody else that's outside the airplane that the key's not in the ignition. So if they're around the propeller area. Um, once we're inside, we have, uh, I have a tire gauge that I've got, but we start with the checklist, which is right down in the middle. And each checklist is for each airplane. So this is November 786 Charlie Papa. So I generally start with the very first page and start at the top. And I, I put my finger on each item. So the first part is pre-flight cabin and I'll say, I'm doing the pre-flight cabin checklist, AIF, which is the airplane information file, review and inspect for airworthiness. So that's this big book. Uh, no matter where you fly, there's gonna be a book that shows how the status of the airplane is for maintenance. So these are the required inspections. These are the dates when they were done and the hours and then when it's next due. So this airplane is good up until it looks like there's nothing coming due here. Right now it's the end of July, 2020. So there's nothing due for quite a while. And then the ne next hours due, we have a 100 hour inspection and a mid cycle oil change, which is the 50 hour point. And that we can check also to make sure that the airplane isn't over that number of hours. And then I would go through this book and generally if there was anything written up, um, all these different tabs, there's a tab in here that talks about when certain maintenance was done and there's weight and balance info and charts okay so i'm going to continue on we'll say that the aaf has been reviewed um, pitot tube cover remove and check clear so the pitot tube is where we sense airspeed and the cover is this little red streamer and I check the hole in the front to make sure that it's clear and there's no bugs or any obstructions in there. The next one is a POH and Garmin G1000 cockpit reference guide accessible to pilots. Those are kept behind the passenger seat. It's usually these big manuals. So I just make sure that they're here. It's the pilot's operating handbook and that's everything we need to know about the airplane. The next is documents, it has arrow, it stands for airworthiness, registration, operating limits, weight and balance. So the documents that are airworthiness and registration are in this little pouch and they can be seen right here. They do have expiration dates. So there's one there and there's the other document there. So we would check to make sure that those are current. Parking brake set. So the parking brake is this handle and the way to set it is to pull it and then rotate it and that will lock it. So now the parking brake is set. Control and avionics lock remove. This lock is keeping our controls from being blown around in the wind. So basically I'll just lift up and take that out and then I stow it right in this pouch. There's a big warning. Warnings mean you can hurt the airplane if you don't follow them. So it says when the master switch is on uh, using external power or manually rotating the propeller, treat the propeller as if the magneto switch were on, which means it could start the engine. Do not stand nor allow anyone else to stand within the arc of the propeller. 
since a broken wire or component malfunction could cause the engine to start. So the magneto switch is basically where the key goes. And that's why I mentioned earlier that we're gonna leave the keys on the dash so everybody can see they're not in. So number seven, magneto switch off. And we just saw that the keys are not in there. Avionics switch bus one and two off. So these white switches, avionics, bus one, bus two, and those switches are off. Next is master switch, alternator and battery on. So the master switch is right next to avionics. It's a red switch. And there's an alternator side, which charges the battery and the battery only side. We're gonna flip both on and look at what the next step is. Step 10, primary flight display, verify on. So right now we're waiting to see if the PFD, which is the primary flight display, comes on, and it did. Next is Hobbs and Tack Time record. So the Hobbs meter is this little gauge way over to the right that shows the hours uh, that the airplane has. That time is also the time that we're looking for uh, when we're basically getting charged if you're ever flying and having to pay for your flights. Um, generally that time is going to operate when the engine is running. So, Tack time is something that's going to be found on the engine. So if I hit the engine button, this is called a soft key, uh, fuel quantity left and right check. So here's our fuel quantity left and right and we're just over 20 gallons in both tanks. Low fuel enunciators off. So there would be, these are enunciators. Right now, if we saw a low fuel, that would tell us we didn't have enough fuel in the airplane. So that's what we're looking for to make sure we don't see the low fuel. Next step is oil pressure enunciator verify on. So we have an oil pressure enunciator, low oil pressure, that's because the engine's not running. Low vac enunciator verify on, low vacuum also is on currently because the engine's not running. So avionics bus one on, and we want forward avionics van, fan check on, and we're gonna listen for that. So I'm gonna turn bus one on, on the white switch, listen for a fan. Okay, I hear the fan and it says avionics bus one off. Now it says avionics bus two on and listen for a fan. And this is the aft bus. So the fan is in the back of the airplane. I hear it running back there. Avionics bus two off. Pedo heat switch on. And so what I'm looking for here is a little green switch over here called pedo heat. And if I flip that switch on, this pedo tube out here will actually start to get warm. So I can feel it, and you don't wanna leave it on very long, you can burn your hand, but uh, I can feel it getting warm. So that would be important if we were in uh, any kind of precipitation or cold weather where we could get icing. I'm gonna turn that back off so we just checked that. This is why I keep my finger on it. Pedo hit switch we just did. So wing flaps extend. The wing flaps are under the passenger side controls and it's a lever like this. And when I push it all the way down, they're electrically operated and you can see the flaps coming down on the wing. So we know that the flaps work. I'm gonna raise those back up. And what flaps do is it allows us to fly at a slower speed and put the nose down so we can see the runway better when we're landing. It also allows us to get more lift on the wing so if we're taking off and climbing out on a short runway, we could use the, the flaps to allow us to get off the ground in a shorter distance. Exterior lights on. So this is where we're gonna go check all of our exterior lights. So right now, the lights are the top row of switches and I have a beacon. I'm gonna turn on the nav lights, the strobe lights, 
and I'm gonna turn on the landing lights just so you can see what everything looks like. So I have all of our lights on. We'll go outside the airplane. So we're looking at some of the lights on the airplane right now. The one on the tail that you see flashing red is the beacon. Um, and that is the only required light for daytime flying. So that is the beacon. On the wingtips, we have strobe lights. Generally only operate those when we're once we're on the runway because they're kind of distracting to other pilots on the ground. Um, we have position lights. The right wing is green, the left wing is red, and the tail is white, solid light. So those are position lights required at night. And then this is your landing light, uh, which is on this airplane an LED light. So we'll go over and look at the other wing. So goes. now we're at the left wing, and the only difference here, we have another landing light. Uh, this position light is red. And now we're back at the tail, and you can see we got the beacon on the top, the red one that's flashing, and we have a white position light on the tail. Okay, so back in the uh, cockpit again, we had the exterior lights on, pitot heat and exterior lights check. So I had already checked the pitot heat and turned it off because we didn't want that to get too hot. We looked at the exterior lights and now it says pitot heat exterior lights off. So I'll just turn all these exterior lights off. We generally leave that beacon switch on because that's a switch that uh, is always required when we're flying, so. Low volts enunciator, check on. Um, master switch alternator and battery off. Master switch and battery off. And then elevator trim control takeoff position. So this is the trim control and right where the arrow is is the takeoff position. There's a white line. So we're going to rotate this wheel to get that white line lined up in the takeoff position. Trim is something that's really important when you're flying. Um, You'll notice it says nose up and nose down. So if you're ever on an orientation flight and you notice that you're having to hold back pressure and the nose keeps wanting to fall, you can trim the nose up by going down with this wheel and that will take the pressure off. And if you ever feel like the airplane's trying to pitch up and you keep having to push, you can trim the nose down and that will take that pressure off. So you can basically fly without just two fingers almost. Okay, so now we're down to uh, fuel selector valve to both tanks. So the fuel selector is all the way down on the bottom pedestal. You have left tank, right wing tank, and both tanks. So the checklist has us go to both for takeoff and landing. Alternate static air valve off, push in. This is the red switch here, alternate static air. It says pull on, we don't want it on, so we make sure it's pushed in. Okay, so we just did uh, alternate static air, we'll push that in. The next one is uh, fire extinguisher check and verify green. It's right between the two seats. And we can see that it's in the green, so our fire extinguisher is good. And the last step is carbon monoxide detector check. And I'm not familiar with this airplane. It's usually uh, stuck to the window here. So um, we'll look for that as we go. Oh, here it is. It's over uh, carbon monoxide detector. Oops, it's really dark. There we go. Yeah, so it does look like it's good. It says to replace after 12 months. So we still have a few months left on that. So that is the end of the biggest part of the checklist, which is the pre-flight cabin. So I would say pre-flight cabin checklist is complete. Pre-flight empennage is the next one. So now before I go outside, I grab my tire gauge. In the back of the pilot seat, there's a fuel strainer and there's a fuel uh, level checker so we'll take these with us as we go around the airplane all right okay so i'm outside the airplane i brought the keys with me we're on the pre-flight empennage checklist so the first step is baggage door check secure so i'm actually going to go up to the baggage door and unlock it with the key so 
half turn and I'll push the bigger button. And in here is where we have, uh, at least for Civil Air Patrol, you can look inside, there's a tow bar, there's a survival kit, there's usually a pair of chocks, and usually some oil and the uh, maintenance manuals for the airplane. So we generally leave this door, even though it says check secure, we leave it unlocked because if the airplane does have a forced landing, we want to have quick access to the survival kit. So. Next is a uh, rudder gust lock remove. So as we go back, I'm checking the general condition of the airplane, the antennas, making sure that there's no dents. I look underneath, I look at the horizontal stabilizer, and I'm checking to make sure there's no dents or any damage here. A lot of these surfaces are either plastic or aluminum, and they're very, very uh, soft metal, lightweight. So you want to be careful that you don't grab these things and jerk on them because you can't break this stuff. This is the elevator. So I'm just going to make sure that everything moves freely. There are a couple static wicks for discharging static. I'll just make sure that they're there. And this is the rudder. It also has a couple of static wicks and some antennas. So I'm checking that. There's a tail tied out. So I'll slide that forward. So tail tie down disconnect, we just did. Control surfaces check, that's what I did by just moving them. Elevator trim tab check secure. So on the right elevator, there's a trim tab. This was that little trim rail that we moved in the flight deck. So if you have pressure on the, air, on the elevator, by moving this little tab, you can take that pressure off and the wind will either force this whole surface down or up. So I'm just checking to make sure it's secure, but I'm not really forcing it. I'm just lightly checking it and just making sure that everything looks good. I always check under the tail to make sure that nobody accidentally drug the tail on a landing or a takeoff, so I don't see any scratches there. And then we're coming around to the last part of the pre-flight empennage was his antennas check. So from this angle, looking forward on the airplane, you can see all the antennas and just make sure they're all there and none are broken. So pre-flight empennage is complete. Now we're going to go up to pre-flight right wing trailing edge and we're going to the flap condition first. So as I'm walking forward, I'm also looking for any damage to the airplane any leaks, anything that's obvious, dents. And I'm starting now at the right um, flap and just checking the condition. So I look at dents and just looking for anything that's obvious damage. Then it's aileron. And the next step on the right wing is aileron check movement. So ailerons are this surface, which is what turns the airplane. So I'm going to once again check to make sure nothing's binding. This is the control rod and there's a little uh, nut on here that I'll just check and make sure that that's tight and not coming loose. So really this surface is fine and this is what rolls your airplane when you turn the yoke. So when you turn the yoke this surface will go up, the airflow will force this wing down and that causes the airplane to roll. So now we have wingtip lights, check condition. So we should have already checked these, but we'll go out to the wingtip just again. And once again, the lights are all in good shape. That's a lens cover, it looks good also. So now, the right wing trailing edge is complete. Pre-flight right wing, wing tie down disconnect. So I'll take this tie down and I'm gonna remove it and place it out of the way. Now we have main wheel tire, 42 PSI check. So when I come to the main wheel, we have the parking brake set. I usually kick the chalk out from behind the front of the wheel. And then here we're looking at the tire for any, any big bald spots, any obvious uh, under inflation. And this is where we would check the actual tire pressure with our tire gauge. So 
we're looking for 42 PSI. And we're right at 42 PSI on the tire. There's a bike pump, and that's basically how you pump these tires up, just like you would on your bicycle. Okay. So now we're up to brake, check visually. Chocks remove and stow. So the chocks I've got removed. The brake is this right in here. This is the brake disc. And in between these gaps is your brake pads. So the pads are on either side of the disc and we're just making sure that we see a little bit of pad and that there's no leaks. Hydraulic or brake fluid coming out of here would be dripping and that's what we're looking for on the brakes. So now fuel tank sumps, there's five and it says to drain them and see the fuel contamination warning. So the sumps we're gonna drain with this device here. There's a little silver pin and there's five of these. So they look like this and I'm gonna drain a little bit of fuel out of each one. That's the first one. That's the second one. That's the third one. That's the fourth one. And the fifth one was right in here. So what we're looking for is a nice blue, is 100 low lead fuel. And we don't want to see any water in there or any kind of debris. So that all looks good. So the next step is fuel quantity checked visually and fuel cap secure and vent clear. So if you come around to the front, this is where I use a ladder. And we're gonna check the fuel visually. So I'm gonna climb up. I'll take the fuel cap off by rotating it Forward and back is closed, so I'll rotate it a quarter turn. It'll lift out. And this gauge is gonna show how much fuel we have. If you think of it like a straw, I'm gonna put my finger on it. So I'm gonna go to the bottom of the tank, put my finger on it and lift up. And that's gonna show a reading of how much gas we have. So right now there's 20 gallons in that fuel tank. And I'll just let the fuel go back out. I usually check it two or three times as you can get different readings, that time I saw 22, and that time I saw 21. So I'm gonna say 21 is a safe amount of fuel that we have in there. Then I'll put that fuel cap back on, and I want it to be straight forward and back for flight. Okay, the next step. Pre-flight right wing is complete and we're on the nose. Fuel strainer valves three, drain. So believe it or not, there's three more valves under the, under the nose that we're gonna drain. And I haven't done this airplane before, but there's one. And there's two. Oh, here it is. And a third one on the other side, which we would get. And that fuel looks good. So the next step on the nose is engine oil dipstick. Check oil level and secure five quarts minimum, eight quarts for extended flight. So this little hatch, we push the button, is where we're gonna have an oil dipstick. And it's this yellow. We'll turn it, it should just be hand tight. This can get very hot in here if the airplane's flown before. So we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna check the oil level. Come out in the sun here so we can see it. So right now there's markings for four, six, eight. And this is fairly new oil. It looks to me like it's right about six. 
It's hard to see on the video, but that's above the five quarts minimum. And then when you put this back on, you want it not too tight, but tight enough that it's secure. Okay, now we're up to engine cooling air inlets check. So that's the front of the airplane. The cooling air inlets are these big inlets here where the cooling air goes into the airplane. And we're just looking to make sure that no bird's nests or anything in there. Propeller and spinner check. So I'm looking to make sure it's secure and I actually feel along the edge of the propeller for any big dents. And this propeller is in good shape, so that all looks good. Air filter check. So right under the spinner is an air filter, and that's all clean. You might see a couple bugs in there, but it all looks good. Nose wheel strut tire 45 PSI check. So I'm not going to do that, but we would use our nose tire gauge to check the tire. Nose tire for the right pressure. Tow bar chocks, remove and stow, so we don't have any chocks on the nose. Engine cooling outlets clear, and static source left check. So the cooling outlets are under the nose again, and they're, they're all clear under there. The static source, I'll be on the other side. On the left side, everything is from the pad's perspective. So, static source left check. Let's see. This airplane, here it is. This little round disc with the one hole in it is the static source. That's what tells you your altitude and your vertical speed as you're climbing and descending. So, airspeed is this pitot tube, and that's a ram air inlet how fast the airplane's going. This static air is telling you more altitude and vertical speed up and down. So now we've got the nose checklist is complete. Pre-fight left wing leading edge. This is all exactly the same. So we would go around once again, removing the tie down. This little vent here is a fuel vent. It's a fuel tank vent, so we're just checking to make sure that that's clear again. And then the rest of this wing is exactly like the other one. General condition, lights, making sure I've got my static wicks on the aileron, nice clear free movement. The nut is secure in there. My flaps are secure, and there's no major dents. So now the left wing is complete. Flip the page. We would do the fuel filler cap, drain the sumps again, check this main wheel tire and the brakes and the chocks. So we do the same exact thing on this tire, check the pressure, check the brakes. Left wing, we've already done the trailing edge. Baggage door recheck secure and it's closed and we're done with the outside of the airplane So now we would pull the airplane out And we're up to exterior inspection is complete. We'd be starting the engine next So once we pulled the airplane out, I would uh, before I did that dump this fuel back into the wing So I'll do that now There's a handle here and a step and there's a place to put your foot. So I would have checked this fuel. Dump all that back into the wing. Make sure that's forward and back. And we're essentially done with the outside of the airplane. We can now tow the airplane out with the tow bar and get in the cockpit. At the end of the exterior, before I get in the, in the cockpit, I always take one last walk around just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I look forward from behind the airplane at those fuel caps to make sure that they're on and facing correctly. So that's my last check before we get in the airplane today to go fly. Go ahead. Okay, so we're gonna simulate that we've pulled the airplane out and now we're getting in the airplane and getting ready to go fly. Okay, so uh, we'd 
simulate that we're out getting ready to fly now. We're on the before starting engine checklist. Pre-flight inspection has been completed. We would do a passenger briefing and make sure that we had our seat belts, all our electric equipment, vents adjusted, fire extinguisher was briefed, and how we were gonna exit in an emergency we would talk about. Passenger brief will say it's complete. Sterile cockpit. We're going to basically limit our conversations at this point because we're getting into a critical phase of flight. Seatbelt shorter harnesses adjust and lock. Make sure that we're all strapped in. Brakes test and set. So we've got the parking brake set. Circuit breakers check in. They're all under here and there's a whole row, two, two or three rows of circuit breakers. So we're just going to make sure that they're all in. If they were out, they would be popped like that and you would see white. So we're gonna make sure all the circuit breakers are in. Electrical equipment off. So our master switch, avionics switches are both off and we're making sure that those are off. Avionics bus one and two off, we just checked. Fuel selector both. We're checking that again to make sure we're feeding out of both tanks. Fuel shutoff valve push in. It's a big red switch here. It's pushed in. Before starting engine checklist is complete. Starting engine using battery. Throttle control open one quarter inch. The black knob is our throttle. So all the way out is idle, and as you push it in, is giving the airplane more power. So we're gonna push it in about a quarter of an inch. Mixture control, idle cutoff. The mixture controls how much fuel versus air is going to the engine. So it says mixture pull lean, so idle cutoff is all the way out, and there's no fuel going to the engine now. And we're up to step three, standby battery switch, test and arm. Hold for 10 seconds, verify that green lamp does not go out and then arm and verify the PFD comes on. So this is standby battery, it's a backup battery. We're gonna test it by holding it down and that green light should stay on for 10 seconds. Looks like it's good. So then we're gonna go up to arm at this point, since our main battery is failed, or the switch is off, it's simulating it's failed, we're running on the standby battery and we're gonna make sure that this primary flight display comes on. And that's checking that the standby battery works. It takes a few seconds for this screen to come on. And now it's powered up. So next is engine indicating system check no red X's through the engine indicators. So all on the left side, we have all the engine indicators. If one of them wasn't working, you'd see a red X like this on the comm frequency up here, but it would be through the engine gauges. So we have no red X's. E bus volts, 24 volts minimum. So this is the essential bus. So we have the M bus and the E bus. We're looking for the E-Bus to show 24 volts minimum, which it's at 24.5. So that shows that it is working. M-Bus volts verify 1.5 volts or less. And the main bus is showing zero, so that's correct. Battery S amps discharge negative. So the standby amps, it is negative, which just means that we're drawing power from that essential bus off the standby battery. And then standby battery annunciator on. So on our annunciators, it's showing that the standby battery is powering the system right now. It's on. Propeller area clear. Master switch, alternator and battery on. So master switch on. Beacon light switch on. That beacon we generally always leave on and it is still on, I'm just checking it. Note, if the engine is warm, omit the priming procedure. Fuel pump switch on, and then I'll usually read what happens next. It says, mixture advance to full rich and wait for the fuel flow indication to be stable and then return to idle cutoff. So the fuel pump switch is a white switch over here. I turn it on, you'll hear the fuel pump. I'm not gonna do it right now, but when that switch is on, if we pushed in the mixture, 
up here on your engine gauges, you would see this fuel flow white line go up and stabilize, and that's priming in the engine. And then we would pull that red mixture switch back out once we primed the engine. And then fuel pump switch off, we did, and then magnetos start. So this is the point where we'd put the key in the ignition. We'd open our window and yell, clear prop, and we would start the engine. And there's more checklists to do, but that gives you a rough idea of how we, how we use the checklist, why it's important, and how methodical you want to be as you go through it. Generally, a pre-flight should take about 10 to 15 minutes once you're familiar with the airplane. But when you're starting out, if it takes 20 minutes, that extra five minutes is well worth the time to make sure you get it right.